Qatar. Currently the richest nation in the world, but not as expensive to travel to as you may think. Because its tourism industry is now just booming and blooming and booming and blooming. Who knows how much more open this country is going to be once the FIFA World Cup takes place there in 2022. Keep in mind that if you travel to Qatar within the next few years or months, you could be one of the first people in the world to have stepped on or seen or done the following attractions. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Contrary to popular belief, you are not going to die or suffer or be in any kind of physical danger once in Qatar because of its blockade. I was there when it started and I'm alive. But if you do try to eat out during Ramadan or go out in the summer months without water, you could starve and dehydrate. But other than that, all's good guys, all's good. The Aspire Tower is also known as the Doha Torch because it looks like a torch. It is 300 meters tall and is currently the tallest structure in Doha and in Qatar. It was built to be the focal point of the 15th Asian Games which was hosted by Qatar. It is just an amazing structure in general and especially when at night it lights up at the top like a fireball. Then there's a torch hotel located inside the Doha Torch. This hotel is magnificent because it's got a kind of in-room iPad solution kind of a thing. If you're staying in the hotel, you can kind of customize your own mood light. You can customize the, um, the curtains, the dinings, the internet, the TV, and a lot of other things. In general, guys, it's just luxury, luxury. Doha's downtown iconic skyscrapers and they light up at night beautifully as well and it's gonna make your jaw drop and what to do there but go shopping in the city center shopping mall especially in the summer months when you don't want to be outdoors skate in the ice skating rink and just indulge in a bunch of Arabic cuisines it's the good life guys this is the good life Oh my god, this mosque is magnificent. Its full Arabic name is very long, but I'm gonna try to say it. It is the Imam Muhammad Ibn Abd al Wahhab Mosque. Guys, it is just so beautiful, but you won't be able to see the prayer hall itself unless you're there to pray, unless that means you have to be a Muslim. But you don't have to see the prayer halls, you can just walk around the mosque and then you're just gonna be in awe because it is so beautiful. It's white and pure, but then there are these intricate details that they've created, spiritual Islamic details that they've created, it's gonna blow your mind away. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Have you seen my video on this spectacular film city? If not, click here. I'm not sure where. Located northwest of Doha, this village is now abandoned, but back about a century ago, people did live here and there was life. People built forts there out of coral reefs. And now, but if you go now, you have to definitely check out. It's the geographic formations, which they call the umbrella rocks. And check out the beautiful film city, which was made for the purpose of filming. See Qatari's national animal, which is the oryx. Just gape at Richard Serra's metallic sculpture out in the middle of the desert. It doesn't get more exotic than that, Qatar. The Pearl is basically Qatar's most luxurious and expensive residential area because it is built entirely on an artificial island. I mean, check out all the yachts that are just lounging around here in this part of the Pearl, which they call the Porto Arabia. But the most beautiful part of the Pearl, I have to say, is definitely the Kanat Quartier. Guys, it is like you are just walking around in Venice, seriously. And then there's the Medina Central, which is this residential area with beautiful, beautiful Spanish architectural buildings, shopping centers and restaurants and everything. If I just, if I just had some money, you know, could just buy a penthouse in the Pearl. My own dream, dream island. This museum 
museum encounters artifacts not from only Arabic nations, but also from other countries that have an Islamic influence as well, for example, India or Iran. It is a great place to go if you want to educate yourself on Islamic culture and history and religion and just kind of gape at the intricate details on the Quran. Here's a tip, you should definitely try a cake, which is, um, is a date's cake in the cafeteria on the first floor. It is just, mmm. Hold on, have you seen my video on this amazing waterfront promenade? If you haven't, you know, you know what to do. It is an absolutely refreshing place. Just go for a walk because the color of the water is just this kind of blue and turquoise kind of color. Oh. And then there's, shall I say, little attractions for you to do along the way. Um, there's basically ongoing artwork, there's sculptures, and there is even, there are even charging stations along the way. So if you feel like walking seven kilometers along this waterfront promenade is just too long, why not just stop and uh, charge your phone? But the most amazing part, I have to say, is just stopping by the dock and just observing the amazing Doha skyline, guys. This view. <sighs> this village was constructed to be a, a culturally educational kind of a place. And there is a golden mosque. Yep, you heard that right. A mosque made of golden sheets. There we go again. Qatar just boasting their riches and luxuries. There's even a majestic amphitheater that overlooks this magnificent view of the sea. And if you go for a walk along the, the beach, you'll actually be able to find um, houses that they've built to mimic kind of the architectural styles of the houses that were built back in the ancient days. And my favorite place in Qatar Cultural Village is this Al Jazeera Media Cafe. Yep, we all know Al Jazeera. They've got a media cafe and you don't even have to wait for your food if you go there because you can basically just match the cards or you can just go into a studio and just pretend to be a news anchor on TV. This is the place you have to go to if you really want to feel how like Qataris would have lived back in the past, back when there were still Bedouin tribal people who would just trade livestock at the market. And then there is the Falcon Souk Falcon Market. There we go, Qataris trying to preserve their traditions, buying falcons that can cost up to nearly a million dollars. Yeah, you heard that right, a million dollars. Get ready guys for the most exotic and unique desert experience ever. If you book an overnight desert safari, here is what you can expect. To ride a camel, to be dune smashing by a very, very experienced driver who's gonna just give you the most adrenaline pumping experience ever because you'll basically be on a kind of like unpredictable roller coaster and then you're just gonna be swung back and not back and forth left and right and up and down in a car guys this was so awesome i loved it so much like, expect to be glamping in the desert right by the sea yep where the desert meets the sea and just kind of ha listen to live traditional music have some barbecue Ex spectacular amazing experience and i think that's it if you feel like you can't decide if you still want to go to Qatar or not, if you have questions or if you feel like you want to go to Qatar and you have some questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment below about tours, you know, where can you stay, what can you eat or anything like that. Please leave a comment below, I will answer. I usually answer all my comments. And if you like this video but you're not planning to go to Qatar, it's okay. Why don't you give it a thumbs up, share the video or you can of course subscribe by clicking on the red, um, red subscribe button below or you will see you in more travel videos bye bye